Hello fellow hams and YouTubers. Well, I've been uh, working for the last day on an antenna design and uh, while working on that design, I needed to measure impedance. And uh, I don't have a way of doing that. Now, a lot of modern antenna analyzers will have a meter that will show you impedance. Unfortunately, I don't have a modern one. I got this junky old early, early MFJ that I picked up for 30 bucks at a ham fest a few years back. So I don't have a way of measuring impedance on, uh, on my equipment, or do I? Well, there's a trick. There's a way, if you have some coils or circuits that you need to measure impedance on, um, that you can do it with a signal generator and an oscilloscope. And that's all you really need. And a little bit of math, and the math is easy. So uh, here is a schematic of a test jig that you can build for measuring um, impedance. On the left there you see you've got your uh, signal coming in and then a voltmeter or voltage measurement, a reference resistor and you have to know that resistor's value precisely and then a measurement for the voltage on the other side of that resistor and then ZX on the right that is the device you're measuring, the unknown impedance. Now quick, uh, quick little primer, what is impedance? Well Impedance is AC resistance. Now you know what a resistor is. It restricts the flow of current. It provides a resistance to current flow, hence the name resistor. And uh, resistors are measured at DC, direct current. Um, now when you, when you have AC, you have something uh, else in the, in the mix called frequency. The, the rate at which the uh, AC signal is oscillating positive to negative. And certain devices, like inductors or uh, capacitors, they'll react differently to different frequencies coming in because of their charge time and discharge time in the capacitor or the uh, uh, rate at which the magnetic field expands and collapses on the inductor, which is uh, you know, a reflection of how many turns it is in its inductance. Um, they'll react to frequencies differently at different frequencies. And that's a pro uh, property called reactance. And that provides a resistance to current flow that varies with the frequency. So a device or circuit will have a resonant frequency um, at which it uh, provides the best load, or a short maybe. Um, an antenna will have a resonant frequency and at that frequency, if it's fed right, you should see a impedance resistive, AC resistive load that matches the output impedance of your transmitter, usually 50 ohms. And if those impedances match, then you have the most efficient transfer of energy from the signal source to the load. So it's important to get impedances to match in tuned circuits, uh, antennas, and so on and so forth. And it's, it's important to be able to measure it. So, back to this test um, jig, what we have is our ref is a known resistance, okay? So you need to measure that and, and know what it is and write it down. Um, and what you're basically setting up is a resistor divider network. You've got your unknown resistance on the device you're measuring and you've got a known resistance and you're going to measure the voltage drop across the known resistance. That's why you take a voltage measurement on the input and the output of it. And once you've got that voltage drop across a known resistance, then you've got all the information you need to do some math and calculate what the unknown resistor is, the, the load. And here's the formula. Um, now what that is saying is impedance is going to equal uh, the voltage VA2, which is the voltage across that unknown resistor, divided by current. Well, we don't know the current, but we're going to be able to calculate that based on that known resistor, you see. So if you look on the other side of that equal sign, here's the actual formula that matters. You take VA2 and you divide it by um, VA1 minus VA2. And then you multiply that by your reference resistor. So it's a pretty simple formula. Now, in order to test 
to, to uh, do my measurements, well, I've got an oscilloscope and I've got a signal source, and I built up that uh, test schematic onto this little plastic, old plastic cover here. And I have a precision resistor that I've measured. I dug through my resistors and found one that was exactly 900 ohms. So, hey, nice round number. Um, so I've got that here, input connections, a wire coming across the resistor, a tap where I can measure it, a tap where I can measure the output, and then I clip on my device that I'm testing over here. So let's, uh, let's measure a couple of things and uh, see what we see. I'm gonna reposition the camera and put another camera on the scope and then uh, we'll walk through measuring a couple of devices. Okay, we're getting a little complicated here. I've got uh, two cameras going and a digital recorder, <laughs> the oscilloscope, and I got a calculator opened over on the computer. So we are all set to measure something. The first thing I'm gonna measure is this 1K precision resistor. Now I've measured it at DC on the multimeter. And uh, in fact, I don't know if we can do this, let's see. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Now, let me prop that up a little for you. Okay. So I've got this resistor. And if we measure it at DC with the multimeter, 1,004, 1,005, 1,004 ohms. Okay, so just, just over 1K. DC. Now, a resistor, a carbon resistor, is non-reactive. It, it doesn't care what frequency you feed into it. So, uh, adjust the trigger level on the scope there. Uh, so, if I hook this up on the output, this is our test. We should see, um, we should be able to calculate its reactance as about 1K because it's going to be the same. It doesn't react to frequency. For a signal generator, I've got the uh, little QCX uh, transceiver output in 10 megahertz into the input side. Presently, the scope is connected to the VA1 connection the, on the upside of the uh, 900 ohm resistor, and I've clipped on my uh, 1K precision resistor. Now, on the scope, if you look right here, PK-PK, -PK, that's the peak-to-peak -peak voltage measurement. So. VA1, or V1 in this case, is going to be one point, uh, eh, it's fluctuating a bit, let's, uh, 1.43, okay, 1.43. Now if I move the scope to the output of that, of that known resistor, we see, again, it's fluctuating a little bit, uh, let's call it, uh, let's call it 740 millivolts, or 0.74 volts. Now we just do the calculations. So the first thing we need to figure out is the voltage drop. V1 minus V2. So 1.43 minus 0.74 gives us 0.69. So that's, that's the V1 minus V2. So now we're going to take V2 and divide it by that. So we take uh, 0.74 divided by 0.69 gives us 1.072463768. And finally, we multiply that by our known resistor, which is 900 ohms, times 900, and 965.21. Now, there's probably some error because of my scope. Um, you can see that peak-to-peak -peak measurement is bouncing around. So I'm a little off there. This, this scope isn't all that all that great it's cheap um <laughs> yeah that's bouncing around quite a bit if i had a more precise voltage measurement there we'd probably get really close to 1000 uh, but as you can see the calculations came out uh, came out pretty darn close now what about uh, another device well let's measure the impedance of this inductor now this is a oh i don't know how many turns that is 40 50 um this is a DC, pretty much a DC short. It's a short piece of wire. It's going to be just a few ohms or even a tenth of an ohm or something on DC. So I'm going to hook it up and we're put 10 megahertz um, AC across it. 
And now we'll uh, do the same thing again. We'll measure the, the uh, voltage on the high side of the resistor. Uh, okay, it's bouncing between 1.28 and 1.3. So we'll call it 1.29. And we'll measure the voltage on the uh, low side of the resistor. Bring the trigger down. There we go. And uh, 464. 472, so we'll shoot for somewhere around the 480, 464, 472. We'll shoot for somewhere around the middle there, let's say uh, 400 and, uh, uh, let's say 480 millivolts or 0.48 volts. Okay, let's do the math again. So the first thing we do is figure the voltage drop, so that's uh, 1.29 minus 0.48 gives us 0.81, okay? So now we take V2, which is 0.48, divided by 0.81. It gives us 0.592592593 times 900, our known resistor. And the impedance of that inductor at 10 megahertz is roughly 533.3 ohms. So we know at 10 megahertz, this inductor is uh, 533 ohms. Now, let's change the frequency. I'm going to go over here to my signal generator. We're at 10 megahertz. We're going to drop that down, let's say, to 5. Okay, 5 megahertz. Now let's do our measurements again. Oh yeah, it was 533.3. At 10. All right, I have to drop the sensitivity on the scope. Okay, high side of the resistor, I'm seeing 2.16, we'll say, volts, low side of our known resistor, 1.57. Okay, let's do the math again. So, first thing we do is figure our voltage drop. 2.16 minus 1.57 gives us 0.59. And then we take uh, voltage across the inductor, which is 1.57, divided by 0.59, gives us 2.661 times our 900 ohm known resistance. And the uh, impedance, of the inductor at five megahertz has gone way up to 2,394.91 ohms, to almost 2.4 K. So at five megahertz, this inductor is providing 2.5 K of impedance or resistance to that signal. At 10 megahertz, it was only providing 533 ohms of resistance to that signal. So that's how you do it. That's how you can use a signal generator and an oscilloscope to figure out the impedance of a component or a circuit, or even an antenna. I could hook this up to uh, my antenna and measure the impedance of, um, of that at different frequencies. Now, of course, it'd be a whole lot easier just to have a, an antenna analyzer that gives me an impedance measurement. <laughs> one of these days, I'll, uh, I'll have some money to spend and I'll buy one. But for now, I'll just have to stick with uh, the extra tools and uh, doing it the old-fashioned way, I guess, with, uh, a lot of, with a little bit of math. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.